Hey everyone, this is Blackbinder, and welcome back to the Let's Play of Tales of Majael. Now, last time, I think we left off with Old Forest. Let's check, just to be sure. Yep, we completed Old Forest and Vanquished Wrath Root. Now, I think we're going to try the maze, but first let's go over our, um, our abilities real quick. Hold on, before we do anything, remember we have to drown our little buddy. Because he is screwing with our stuff. Alright. What do we want to do here? Let's go ahead and throw one more into combat accuracy. And then I'm just going to max out heavy armor training for the crit shrug. Uh, now I, we should get some amount of crit shrug from this as well. Yeah, we do get quite a bit of crit shrug from that. Hmm. So do we really need this? No, probably not. So let's save the points for now um, until we get Tinkers. What do I want to go, go with over here? Over here, um, Shared Insanity. You establish a powerful mental link with your worm that walks. As long as you remain within th radius 3 of your worm that walks, each of you gains 16% all resistance for 5 turns. Additionally, your worm that walks permanently gains an inscription slot every 2 raw talent levels. So we'll go ahead and put... Um, Let's just go, let's go one point. I really don't need him to have an extra infusion right now. Uh, it would be nice, but we don't need it. All right, we need 46 magic by level 22. So we're, we're good for now. Uh, what else do I want to use? I do want to get this up eventually, but let's go ahead and, hold on, we need to take the points out of there real quick. Horrific display. <clears throat> let's look at these. You forcefully try to turn a creature into a horror. If the target fails a magical save against your spell power, its appearance turns into that of a horror for six turns, making all other creatures creatures hostile to it. Enemies near the target will have their target cleared on application. Enemies near will have their target cleared on that application. Okay. Enemies, um, basically, they'll forget about you for a second. And then they'll reacquire their target after realizing that the monster you target this with is hostile. So hopefully they'll go for him instead of you. However, um, failing a magical save versus our spell power is not likely. So we won't be getting this unless this is really good. Call of Amokthel. You attune your horrors to the dead god Amokthel, increasing your summoned horrors damage by 10%. At talent level 3, your decaying devourer spell will summon 4 additional Devourer is adjacent to random enemies nearby, and your bloated horror will learn the agony talent. Both of those are pretty nice. At talent level 5, victims of your horrific display will pull enemies in radius 10 one space towards them each turn. That would be nice, but we're never going to be able to get that off. So, really what we're doing here is it's the extra decaying devourers. The agony talent on bloated horror is okay, but that's a slow ramping up damage over time ability. So it's really not that great. Um... And we also don't want him casting that first instead of mines here. So we probably are going to not get these two. What is this? Writhing hairs. For a brief moment, horrific hairs grow on your head, each of them ending with a creepy eye. You use those eyes to gaze upon a target area, and creatures caught inside partially turn to stone, reducing their movement by 32% and making them brittle for 7 turns. Brittle targets have a 35% chance for any damage they take to be increased by 33%. This cannot be saved against. So yeah, we'll take a point in that. Um, that's a pretty big increase in damage, 68%, but it's only 35%. So it's kind of like a mini crit, 35% for a mini crit chance. Uh, let's look at Glimpse of True Horror. Whenever you use a Disfigured Face Power, so any of these, uh, you show a glimpse of what True Horror is. If the affected targets fail a spell save, they become frightened for two turns, giving them 9% chances to fail using talents. Uh, fail using talents is it's a pretty nice... Um, debuff, but again, it's got a beat spell save, and it's a pretty low chance too. It's only nine percent. That's pretty low. The poisons you get as rogues are much better. When a ta when a target becomes afraid, it bolsters you to see their anguish, increasing your darkness and blight damage penetration by fourteen percent for two turns. No, so neither one of these are good enough for us to bother with. Um, well, what is it? We could get this, it's for two turns, the damage buff. So if we could beat the spell save, it would increase our damage with Darkness and Blight by about 50%. But uh, I like this one. It does cost insanity, but that's okay. Let's let's just test it out first. Uh, for a brief moment. 
Looks like it's got a pretty decent range too. All right, I'm gonna go all mutated hand here to increase our tentacle attacks. Yeah, I like that. It gives us a better crit chance too, but base power goes up is the main thing. So it can actually do a little bit of damage. All right, everything else I'm gonna wait for tinkers. Can I not? Yeah, I can't summon my guy right now. I do need to level him up as well. Alright, but we are heading to the maze. Sometimes the maze sucks, sometimes it doesn't. We get some pretty... I've been, I get pretty unlucky there with uh, Ran boss spawns. Yep, that is our pet coming back. Look at this. 16% all damage resistance just for being by our worm bro. That is awesome. Whoops. I accidentally went around this guy Where is that? Youch, okay, we need to get back What do we want to do here let's F into him <laughs> I, once again, this morning, tried an Archmage, but I could not get them past Tier 2s. I think I'm going about it the wrong way. Uh, clearly, the most, the race that pairs with the Archmage the best is a Shalor. However, they have really crappy life rating, and so does the Archmage. So what I'm going to do next time is I'm going to go an all-defensive race. Something with high life rating, maybe an Ogre, or something that can shunt damage, like a Dwarf or something. I haven't decided exactly yet, though. Alright, we got a Ran boss here. He is a... Uh, looks like a Doombringer, a Demonologist with an Anorithal. So let's not mess with them. Let's just do our main thing. Or our easy, easy kill rotation. Alright, now, you see these raining meteors? Sometimes they cause, like, a an infinite loop to happen. I don't know what causes it, but it happens especially a lot on the solipsist. I don't know why. So if a bunch just go off at once and you die, just there's really nothing you can do about it. Alright, I don't want him to get a chance to use Power Surge, so... Oh, he's no, he's a Demonologist, so he has Osmosis Regeneration. Now, Osmosis Regeneration is really hard to overcome, but if you keep beating on them, eventually they run out of Vim, so... It's, it is possible to take him out. What do we want to do here? Let's do Pustulant Fulmination and heal a little bit. I need to get back though. Nope, he wanted to drag us closer to him. Uh, do I have enough time to do my spits? Maybe. Alright, and then we'll jump away. Use our little speed buff. Oh god. We're in trouble. Yep, we died. First death. Now the question is, yeah, let's go back. We have full insanity, so we should be able to jump in on him pretty quickly and take him out. Let's inspect him. Is he full up on Vim again? He is. All right. So, summon our dude back there, spit at him, and then let's get our shield up with Augur Wrath and... What do I want to do here? I guess we could lash while he's close to us. I'm trying to keep my insanity up for when I have to start kiting him. Slimy tendrils, what is that? Reducing all damage by 28%. Uh, what is that? I forget what causes that. Wait a minute, I'm an idiot. I have gloves of dispersion. That'll make this a lot easier. So we're actually gonna run away. Buy time for our Os or our dispel gloves to uh, cool down. That should be everything. All right, now watch without 
osmosis regeneration is going to be a lot easier to kill. You know what the problem is? I think I forgot to put re-put my points in Bloated Horror, didn't I? I did. What did I put it in? I put it in this. Son of a gun. No wonder he doesn't last very long. I thought he was dying, but he just was despawning. Let's lash out. Spit at him. Let's do this one, and then we'll dodge his mine drones. They're really slow. Lash again. These guys are annoying Minotaurs and Molotars um, simply because they have a huge range war shout, which confuses you. We will try to kill this guy. Alright, we should be good now. Nope, do not open the sack yet. Not until we're sure none of the other guys are going to kill us. I'm actually going to clear the zone first. That way if I need to psycho port away, I don't do I don't port teleport into an, another uh, rare or ran boss. Hmm, let's spit at him. Level 20. Awesome. Whoops, that was the wrong one. F is what I wanted. Does this give me insanity? Insanity gain 30. Holy cow, that is really nice. I should always start the fight with that. Although I don't really like starting the fight by teleporting into battle before I know what's actually there. But I'll do it anyway. Did you silence me? You silenced me, you butthead. He is, an, oh my god, an archer with shadow, shadow combat. It's actually not too bad because uh, they don't work together very well, but I don't like fighting archers, and intuitive shots is extremely annoying, especially on enemies, because it seems like the chance for it to work is just insane. Hold on, I'll, I'll show you what it is here in a second. He must have teleported away. Uh, Shadow Blades have teleport and phase. Phase door. Alright, we got a spit coming at us. But it was just from a jelly. Okay, we need to be careful here. He's got fiery hands. That's not That doesn't matter, but arcane combat. He can proc a spell when he hits us. So it can end up doing a lot more damage than you're expecting. So let's dispel it. What are we at for stun resistance? We're at 100%, so I don't need a pre-movement, but yeah. He's neutered now without arcane combat. We should be fine. Alright, what do we want to do here? Let's just run away, because I don't actually know what's here. It was a sapper. I hate sappers. They're super annoying. It seems like they were a lot better before, or a lot more annoying before. It seems like they actually engage you now, but before they would seriously just run away forever, putting traps everywhere and it's like going invisible. It's super annoying. Alright, let's one run away. We've got a lot of debuffs on us right now. There we go. That other guy shouldn't be able to move, if I remember right. Is he still up there? No, he must have teleported. He can't move, but he can teleport, or maybe my worm that walks killed him. Both a possibility. Alright, we got Keen Senses. He's a rogue, and a necromancer, and an anorithal. So let's, uh, let's dispel him first. Get rid of his, well, really nothing. Blurred Mortality is annoying, because it gets him, gives him a lot of negative health. So even if you take him to zero life, he's not necessarily going to die. But we just dispelled it, so. Ah, stop that. I hate their Invoke Darkness. It just does a lot of damage. Early on, anyway. Later on, it won't be too bad. Unless it's on, like, a Ran boss or something. 
that is specifically built for darkness and magical damage. All right, we've got a Minotaur, Minotaur, but he's a, looks like he's just a Mind Slayer, so we should be okay. Looks like we're not really hurting him, though. That's no good. No bueno. Can't dispel mental effects, so not with our dispersion gloves anyway. Ouch. And he's still got the Minotaur Warshout. There we go. Went down. Behemoth's hide is uh, decent leather armor early on. It's got a big amount of hit points, if I remember right. But I never use it. 45 life, not bad. Gives you a size category too, I think. All right, where's that sack? Let's not forget to open that. These can be really good. Oh wait, we just did. The chest. Any other chest that we might have missed? Nope, there's a sack. I knew we missed the sack. What do we got here? Uh, a gloom, or not a gloom, a cursed cultus of entropy. Foul convergence on him, please. Need to be careful he doesn't get us with a huge blast all at once. Always got to worry about that with magic damage. Physical too, but you're always wearing armor, so you at least have some way to mitigate it. All right, let's go. We're going to put them back into our bloated horrors. Uh, we have a category point. Did we... Yeah, we did save a Tinker, so I will go get the Tinker. Let's uh, let's just bring them up evenly for now. All right, what do, what do we got here? Anything decent? I guess we can look at these one-handers. No, it's, this one's okay, but it's it's got really low base damage. It's a great sword. All right, so there was nothing there we could give to our pet. What does he have for armor? This is a Voratun armor, so it's going to take a lot of strength to use. 60, but uh, we'll take it. It's got a good amount of resistances, good armor, good... Uh, it's got a decent um, on-hit chance of 15% damage reduction. Really decent life rege regeneration, so not bad. We'll take it. What about this one? Our other guy's never going to have enough strength to use this well not for a long time but it's got plus 15 constitution so i'm going to keep that specifically to help me unlock thick skin so i don't have to manually raise my constitution because you want thick skin but you also don't want to waste points into uh constitution on most classes an alchemist could probably get away with putting in points into constitution because they've already got really good crit shrug so they don't need dexterity for that all right, what are we using up here for our hat? Stun and freeze resistances. And this isn't very good anyway. It's orange and it's got decent stat increases, but that's it. Let's see. Nothing else is really worth our time, so we'll just leave it. All right, we need to be careful here because the boss comes to find you, it seems, almost all the time. So there'll be a rare or two up here but you also have a huge Minotaur coming for you as well. He's not too bad. It's just he'll always start off by confusing you. And if you're fighting one or two more rares, that's a problem. But by himself, he's really not that bad. Watch me die to him. I really need to start using this. But where would I put it? I guess we'll just put it right underneath my spit, or my, yeah, my spit. All right, is something else hitting me? I feel like something else is hitting me. How much are we healing for? Doesn't say. All right, let's lash. And he's down to 158. All right. Dedication is, um, I've never gotten the full set for it. It's an anti-magic dual wielding set, I believe. Dedication and perseverance. Yeah, it is a part, it is said perseverance comes in hand with dedication. So I don't actually know what the set bonus is. I do want to use it, but by the time I get both of them, the orange, orange weapons, Randarts are going to be better. 
like on a uh, Krog curse or something. Ouch. Let's teleport away. And then run. Nope, he teleported with us. Awesome. Can't see anything. No, get away from me. You've got osmosis, don't you? No, you don't. Let's uh, first dispel that rain of fire, and then we'll get in on you. All right, what do we got for chests here? All right, he is a bulwark B, but that's all he is, so we should be okay. Oh crap, there's another guy up here. Let's foul convergence. This should put us on the other side of the B. He did. This is some kind of rogue. If they have the throw not throwing knives ability, you can hear it with the. Whoop. You can hear them throwing it. That's a good thing because they waste their turns throwing knives and throw knives are terrible. I tried to build for it once and it just... The damage is terrible. It's okay for applying debuffs, but you have flurry for that anyway. You're going to get a ton of hits off with that. Alright. Steel plate armor. Nope, it's crap. Well, it's just not good. Not crap necessarily. Alright, we've got undeterred boots. We could... Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put the undeterred boots on. We'll lose disengage and the on-hit effects, but that means we can re-put on our our hat with the physical crit chance and life. Might just be a sideways upgrade, but I always want undeterred boots anyway, so eventually we would have switched those out, so... Undeterred boots are, when it says undeterred, it's silence, confusion, and stun immunity. The crappy part is that you cannot wear it if you are anti-magic, because that ego makes it arcane. That's a decent helmet, but we just got rid of a stun resist helmet, so we don't need another one. Let's see, do we have a magic item yet? Good. Oh, damn it. I can't give you that. We'll uh, look for something else. Alright, where are we going after the maze? You know what? Let's go to the hidden compound. This place can be very difficult. The reason why is every monster in here, the ones that you want to kill anyway, are casters. And they have two little enthralled slaves who are brawlers and then will grapple you if you get too close. All right, let's uh, dispel his arcane power. I don't need him doing even more. Jesus, cast their damage to me. Just waiting around the corner for my health to regain. We got another one, this is a different one. Looks like he is a writhing one. He's got chaos orbs, but he's also got a worm that walks, so. See how I'm using the corners to buy myself a turn occasionally? Because it's hard to fight this guy straight up. Damn it. I need to get over there. But walking into him is not smart. Let's see if we can't... There we go. Alright, when you kill them, the enthralled slaves are nice to you, so long as you don't hit them on accident, which can happen quite often. Come over here. Let's wait for him to come around here. Nope, they are not moving. Jesus. Three cast of rares in a row. Or in the same area. We need to get them one by one. Because there's no way I can uh, take that kind of punishment. Sometimes you have to kill the slaves. Don't feel bad about it. Shoot. Alright. Alright. The casters could be coming around the corner anytime, so what I'm I am confused, but what I'm going to try to do is walk up and around the corner. Am I here? No. You can use like uh, I can use my cone to figure out where I am. So I am right here. All right, we might be able to take them at this point. Let's converge here. 
I was hoping it would put me down there. Alright, now I'm going to actually teleport away and let my bloated whore do the work. And hopefully. Come on, I failed twice in a row. Let's, uh... Let's do this. Let's spit at him so I can get the guy in the back. Have him play with my little guys. All right, you know what? Let's inspect our devourers real quick. I, I realize I never went over their actual talents. Bloodbath, this is a berserker skill. Delight in spilling the blood of your foes. After scoring a critical hit, your maximum hit points will be increased by 2%. Your life regeneration by 1.7 per, per turn and your stamina regeneration by 0.34 per turn for six turns. That's, I mean, that's pretty useless on this guy. They don't survive long enough and I can't imagine they have decent crit chance. Yeah, 28%, it's more than I thought, but it's still not very good. Uh, Frenzied Bite. A nasty bite that hits for 131% weapon damage, reduces the target's healing by 15%, and causes the target to bleed for 217% weapon damage over 5 turns. Uh, those look like high percentages, but he only does 48 damage, so. Uh, gnashing Teeth. Bites the target for 72% weapon damage, potentially causing it to bleed for 111% weapon, percent weapon damage for over 5 turns. If the target is affected by bleed, it will send the devourer into a frenzy for 3 turns, which in turn will frenzy other nearby devourers. The frenzy will increase global speed by 18%, physical crit by 18%, and prevent death until negative 18% life. That's actually not too bad. They work together well. Especially if you have a ton of them with the Call of Amcathel. Should be always going off. I want to get this guy in the back because he's easier to kill and he can still do large amounts of damage. So, yeah, see, we got him in one teleport. Let's let's summon our devourers and let them do their thing. Distract the dude. The uh, the <laughs> the enthralled slave was freed, but then he walked right into my my carry on worms area of effect, so he immediately turned hostile. Ouch. We got a Doombringer here, I think. Steel Helm of Garkul. That Steel Helm of Garkul has a huge Skull Crack multiplier. However, the only class that gets Skull Crack without an item is the Marauder that I know of. Ow. Look at that. I am screwed here. What can I do? Do I have diet negative? Okay, good. I have diet negative life, or I would be screwed. This does... No, I'm still screwed. It does 131 freaking damage. Am I missing something? No, I can dispel myself, because it's magic. Good. I should be able to. Nope, didn't work. Son of a bitch. Ah. I hate this place. It's completely optional, too, so I shouldn't even be here. This is magical, right? No, it's mental. Okay, so never mind. I was gonna attempt to... I'm gonna dispel infestation so he doesn't... It's a damage reduction. Uh, sustain. And I don't want him being reduced. Or reducing my damage. I want to see if I can actually remove a magical effect with dispel gloves. I've never... I mean, I just tried, but it obviously wasn't successful. Wait a minute, I could have used this, couldn't I? Increasing all your resistances by 12%. I could have used that. It might have saved me. 10, 12% of 130 is at least 13, and I was about 10 hit points away from living. Well, there you go. Figure out the mistake after you already die. Seems to be how it goes usually. Still on level one, too. There are two levels to the Slaver's Compound. At the bottom, you can get a pretty decent ring. This is pretty good. Uh, 
25% chance to put talent on cooldown when you hit a target. So let's transfer it to our worm. I don't know that he has something better or not. I don't think he does. All right, this gives us plus 10% physical damage and a decent amount of stats. But ours is better for what we want. The 7% crit chance and 50 life with 7 armor. Uh, it's close though. Eventually I want to switch back to my mountain helmet or something like that. Corruption trial. This isn't very good. Decent, decent life regain, but it gives me negative light resistance, which I hate. And then some, some amount of stats, but again, not good enough to wear. Let's check out what you're wearing here. 13% chance for random gloom and cripple. So there's no way I'm going to take that one off. And this one does epidemic, epidemic and disease. So no, I'll keep that one. I'll keep this just in case I want to use it, but I probably won't. All right, did we level up? Oh, damn it. We needed to go get our tinkers. And you want to get it as early as possible too, because um, not necessarily at level 10, I'm just saying at like level 20, when you decide to get tinkers, you want it right away because it takes a while to build up enough ingredients to build up, to actually build what you want because you have to build the items you use from tinkers. All right, what do we got here? Shattering Impact and Onslaught. He is a Berserker, so we should be okay. All right, let's uh, speed up here so he doesn't get a free shot off on us and lash out. Foul Convergence, Lash Out. Probably should get our Bloated Horror. He wasn't dying very fast. Oh, it's because he got Intuitive Shots. I hate that spell. We do need to go over what that actually does, though. I need the I need the item description, though. I know what it is only because it's annoying. It Basically, they evade shots every once in a while. But every once in a while seems like every single shot sometimes. Let's see. Do you have anything I need to... No. Keen senses. Hold on, let me look what that is. Yeah, that is... Oh, no! Okay. I thought that was a rogue thing. It's actually like a, a paradox mage thing or arc mage thing. It's the one after arcane eye, if I recall correctly. So it doesn't mean that they're a rogue when they have keen senses. What do we... Our base... Our base power is 72, so we're losing quite a bit of base power here, but we get 6% resist all and 14% physical resistance with some spell power. Uh, you know what? Let's test how much actual character sheet damage we lose. All right. This guy is good. You can't see him because he's invisible. He's not always. He's a slaver. Um, we'll kill him because it's the right thing to do, but first got to play the slave game. All right. First thing, come in and put all your points into strength, I think for extra physical power. I actually think they scale off a of dexterity and cun cunning, but it doesn't matter. Make sure to activate striking stance for the passive damage reduction. Now, an enemy like this, don't worry about using your moves, just take him down. Um, this one, still take him down. You wanna save your grapples for the orc wormix or the bears. The orcs have higher stats than these guys, which makes them annoying, but the wormix are the worst. I'll use it on this orc. See how he's got 300 hit points compared to the other guys like 200? They're harder to kill. Stun him as well. Oh, we got another one, so let's do the same thing. The worst part is when you get two uh, ice wormix in a row and they ice breath you to death. Alright, we got one here, 364. See how their hit points just are insane compared to the other enemies? Alright, we are blind, but I'm pretty sure we're okay. Okay, we got a bear here. Bears aren't too hard to kill, they just soak up a lot more attacks, which uh, buys time for the next enemies to spawn. Alright, what do we want here? Hmm. Bloated Horror. We'll get one more point in Bloated Horror, and then I'll start 
uh, spreading out my points elsewhere. Let's go strength for now. Alright, let's get this guy surrounded and then foul convergence. Nope, we can only do that when we're in combat, apparently. So we need to force attack him first. Um, it's a crapshoot whether or not your spells are going to work on allies. Some classes do, some classes don't. So The only way to know is to test it, figure it out. Alright, none of this we want, so it's all crap. The ring we got from there is the blood collar. Let's, let's go ahead and check that out. Alright, negative 5% fat fatigue, negative 7 mental save. Life leech, chance 15%, and the amount is 30% of the damage done. Now that is on everything. Even casters can use that. You know what? We should put that on, but we can't afford it just yet. Let's see how much stun resistance we need. We need 20, about 28% to be able to use that. Or to take off the ring, anyway. Do we have anything yet? No, we don't. All right, let's go grab Tinkers, and that's where we'll end the uh, episode. Episode. This is only here if you ta if you saved the uh, Tinker escort and asked him where he learned his craft. Otherwise, this won't be here. And also, doing this at level ten is very difficult for melee classes. Um, an arc make an arc mage or a caster could probably get away with it, but um, if you're a melee class without like a tentacle totem or something, this is very difficult. These mobs. Ooh, we got the mirror razor. It's a saw blade, but I don't think it's actually very good. We'll, we'll look at it here in a second. All right, that's it. This guy in here, it's supposed to be like a computer, basically. Ancient automated teacher. Okay, mirror razor. When this weapon hits, turn back the clock. 8% chance at level 2. Uh, activating this, this item is instant. It can be used to... It can be used to five turns after use. Mirror yourself across the map, centered around the location you were standing when activated. So, teleport maybe? Alright. Pay 500 gold and a talent category point. Now, we have learned Steam Tech Physics and Steam Tech Chemistry. Let's access the store. We want all of these. You'll probably get them anyway, and they are pretty expensive, but just grab them... I just grab them anyway. I am going to grab one of these, but we probably won't use it right away. Ooh, we have grounding strap already. I guess we learned that um, on our own, so we don't need the... We don't need the... Uh, we don't need the schematic. You got to use all these manually. Uh, 324 and 14. Let's see, do we have an inscription slot open? No, we don't. Son of a gun. Hmm. This is only a 187 shield, so I'll replace this with an injector when I can actually make something. Right now I can't make anything, because the way for you to get these ingredients here is by using the automated portable extractor. Now, now you can click on it, melt all one items. It basically acts like your transmogrification chest, but you need to click on it again to make the automated portable extractor the default item destroyer. Otherwise, you're actually not going to get ing ingredients. You're still going to just be transmogrifying everything. And to my knowledge, there's no benefit of transmogrifying something over melting it down for ingredients. All right, let's check this out. What are we at on our character sheet for damage? 102 with 40 accuracy. This gives us... Okay, we're only losing four damage. I am going to use this. For damage on the character sheet. That doesn't necessarily um, equate to four damage every attack. All right, we're up to 22% resist all. I like that. All right, let's uh, melt down everything we don't need, which is all of this junk. We will keep the mountain hat and the breathe underwater hat. Let's melt down all this stuff. Uh, we can melt these down, but I don't think they actually give you anything. And some uh, recipes actually require gems, so hold on to them until you know you've gotten everything you wanted um, from tinkering. All right, let's go into here. Now, when you hit, when you get tinkering, you unlock these two trees. Don't put any points into it until you get the recipe you want. Now, what you 
this is going to be a huge list eventually. Now, what you go through is, it's kind of backwards. You need to get the schematic first before wasting points. So, I want water salve. So, you want water salve, fiery salve, frost salve. You want all of these. So, let's go through here. What do we need? We need therapeutics at three. Okay, so we know we're going to want that. So, let's just put two points in therapeutics. All right. We know we want that. Okay, we automatically learned poison groove. You learned, you have a chance to learn stuff when you put points into these. So, but that won't matter. You get so much, you get so many schematics, especially in the base campaign, it's not going to matter. But now we definitely want grounding strap. 10% uh, freeze. We can attach this to our cloak for free. So basically, it gets up to 40% stun and freeze immunity. So we can just put that on any cloak we want. And once we make it, we have it forever. You can take it off, put it on, take it off, put it on. So for this, I want smithing one. You can see we've already got that, but we also need electricity. But to get to electricity, we have to get over here. So I'm gonna have to take one in mechanical just to get to electricity. All right, now these last two, if you're not a steam user, they're pretty useless. Um, increases the, the efficiency of all steam tech you operate, granting 15 steam power, and then increases the capacity of your steam tank by five. Um, I don't think this one's good, the steam tank by five, even if you are a, a, t a tinker class like Gunslinger, Sly Shot, or saw, saw Butcher, but this one is really good, especially for automated cloak tessel tessellation. I really like uh, maxing out my steam power on the Sly Shot and Gunslinger sling specifically. All right, let's look at our pet real quick before we end it. Uh, what do we want to do here? Let's get up to 36 magic, and then we'll pump the rest into strength, grab some accuracy, um, and what what points are we gonna put it in? Let's go infestation. Let's see what do we got here. What's the damage reduction looking like? Ah, it's not going up a lot, so we need 38 for this. All right, pestilent blight. Let's uh, lower this by two and put two into magic. Pestilent blight. Blight. You have an 8% chance on dealing blight damage to cause the target to right away, silencing, disarming, blinding, or pinning them for one turn. This effect has a cooldown. At talent level four, this effect targets in a radius one ball. Your worms also have a 4% chance. <clears throat> excuse me. Chance to blind, silence, disarm, or pin with their melee attacks, lasting two turns. The, sh the chance to apply this effect will increase with your spell power. All right. The chance to actually work, or the chance. The percentage chance for this to go off increases with your spell power, but look at this, 8% and 4% chance, that's that's enough as it is. So, um, this is actually useful even if we're not going to pump up his spell power. He does get a lot of spell power naturally. Let's actually look at his spell power real quick. Where is he? I don't know where he went. There he is. Alright, let's look at his spell power real quick. Yeah, spell power 46. His spell power, let's check it against our physical power. Our physical power is 54. So his spell power is not actually lagging very behind right now. And I think it's because they they get, give him a huge boost to spell power when he levels to make it so his debuffs with the right equipment have a chance to work. So I think they just, it's, it's naturally elevated. But uh, yeah, that's where we're going to leave it for now. So please leave a like or comment below and feel free to subscribe for more full Let's Plays like this one. And thanks for stopping by.